appropriate line occur here. In this presentation, we will get started with XNA Studio. As you can see, I have Visual Studio opened up. So I'm going to create a new project. And this will be different than what we've used in the past. Notice that I have the Visual C Sharp tree opened up. And we're going to go to XNA Game Studio 3.1. I'm going to name this project XNA1 and it will spin up and create the default project and if you just kind of scroll through that source code you'll see there's a lot more to it than what we used to see with the uh, console programs. So I'm going to take just a minute and give you a little short tour of this source code. First thing you need to know is up here is where we are going to declare our variables. And more correctly, this is where we're going to declare our member variables. There's a difference between a member variable and a local variable. A member variable, if you think back to C++, is more like a global variable. Okay, And uh, we won't get too deep into that. Okay, Here's our constructor we're only going to add one thing to this, but this is um, the code that runs every time a class is created. Okay. The load content method, that's where we're going to come to load our images and later on sounds and so forth. We don't really use the unload content method. Update gets called every so often. I think it's about 60 times a second, second it gets called. And this is where you update like uh, game variables and um, let's say you have a, a spaceship or something and you're moving it around, you'll update its position here. And finally, here's the draw. Now, if I compile this guy and run it, you will see that there's just a blue screen there. We can actually change that blue screen here to any color we want. Turquoise, compile it and run it. You see it changes. Now, that will actually never uh, be seen later on as we start doing this stuff. Um, mostly, you'll, you'll be drawing images. Okay, so let's, let's get started. The first thing we need to do is I want you to go up to Google Images, excuse me, and download four images. Mine are Hubble 1, Hubble 2, Hubble 3, Hubble 4. Uh, it really doesn't matter what you, what you download. Um, try to get them around 500 by 500 or 300 by 300 or some manageable size. And if you would, name them 1, 2, 3, and 4. For instance, if you have something called food, it might be food 1, food 2, food 3, food 4. Or if you like uh, ice cream, ice cream 1, ice cream 2, ice cream 3, ice cream 4, and so forth. Mine are Hubble 1, Hubble 2, Hubble 3, Hubble 4 because I think they're really nice images and pictures. Okay? So... Go ahead and pause this and do that right now. Okay, so in my Solution Explorer, you're going to see a content directory. Okay, I'm going to take Hubble 1 and drag it into that content directory. And you'll see it appears there. And if you go down here, you'll see that the asset name is Hubble 1. It's not the file names that we refer to in our program. It's the actual asset name. Okay? Now... We're going to declare a variable. It's going to be a texture 2D. We're going to call it M OBJ background. Now, this is just like C++. There's a type and then an identifier. In C++, the types are like ints, longs, shorts, floats, and so forth. Here, we're just declaring a type that's the texture 2D. And we call it M underscore OBJ background. Normally, M underscore means it's a member variable. OBJ means it's some sort of a an object. Okay, we're also going to have to declare a content manager. Now just to let you know, for every image you load, there's a texture 2D. There's only one content manager for the entire program. Okay? Alright, good. Now we're going to scroll down into the load content method. Get rid of this source code comment here. And we're going to go ahead and first create 
our content manager. Okay, so we add this line, content manager equals new content manager services. Make sure you observe the capitalization of not only the variable name, but the actual type. Okay, and let's go ahead and load the picture, mobj background equals, and unfortunately I'm going to have to break this up so you can see it. My font is a larger size font, uh, so that's easy to read. Anyway, content manager, remember lowercase c there, dot, and it doesn't have to be a lowercase c, but that's what we named it. Load, texture 2D, you're telling it the type you're loading, content.root directory, and I'm going to scroll up real quick. This is where we initialize that. So if you ever change it, if you have a program where you're loading content from a different place, you will change that up there. Okay. Um, let's see. We don't need this. This was from another thing I was doing. Let me just go ahead. Okay. And that will load the image. Okay. Now, I'm going to go ahead and compile and run the program. If, okay, compiled, no typos. If I get this asset name wrong or anything wrong here, the program will actually crash. So if my program doesn't crash, as it did, then I know I've, I've done everything correctly and it loaded that image. Once again, if your program crashes, check the asset name and check this because that's probably where you went wrong. Now I'm going to go down to the draw method. And we have to st start everything with sprite batch dot begin. We have to end everything with sprite batch dot end. And then all of our drawing stuff goes in between there. So we're going to say sprite batch dot draw. Give it the name. Now we have to give it a rectangle where it's going to draw. 0, 0, that's the x and y coordinates to which it will draw. Um, it's going to be the upper left hand corner of the screen. And we're going to draw. Let's just make something up, 250, 250. And we're going to change that fairly soon. Okay, color dot white. Um, this is something I'm not going to explain. Um, it gets kind of deep, and uh, uh, it's not that important for this class. Just get in the habit of using color dot white. Okay, this will draw the background at 250 pixels width and 250 pixels height. If I compile and run this, you will see that image. Okay, that actually um, is okay, but what we really want to do is we want to fill the window. We want to stretch it out so that the entire window has that image. Okay, so here we go. Let's go up to the top and declare two more variables. M and screen width. M and screen height. Good. Okay, now we're going to scroll down to the load function. Actually, it's the load method. You know, I sort of unfortunately interchange method and function. In object-oriented programming, it's it, they're called methods. In uh, more procedural, like C++, they're called functions. Okay. Screen width equals these built-in things. Window.clientBounds.right minus window.clientBounds.left. That gives you the width. Screen height equal, equals the bottom minus the top. Okay, good. Now what we do is we go back to our draw method, which is down at the bottom. We say M and screen width, M and screen height. Compile that bad boy, run it, and there you go. That image fills the entire screen. Okay, I'm going to put the source code on... Uh, blackboard so you have it. I uh, I would prefer that you not use it. Also, after you're done with this, go ahead and create yet another program without me spoon-feeding you and see if you can work through it and get it right. Anyway, that's all for now. Thanks a lot.